text verse for this morning's message. That being Acts chapter 2, verse 36. Therefore, let all the house of Israel know assuredly that God hath made that same Jesus, whom ye have crucified, both Lord and Christ. Amen. God hath made that same Jesus. Right. Whom ye have crucified, both Lord and Christ. Sometimes you will hear a preacher talking about you and I making Jesus Lord of our lives. I don't think that the sentiment is bad, but I do believe that it's technically not scriptural. I'm going to talk about the concept, and I'm going to talk about what we mean by that, but our text that we just read says that it's not you and I that really make Jesus Lord. God the Father made Jesus both Lord and Christ. Amen. If you don't recognize that Jesus is Lord... He is still Lord. Amen. One day, everyone will recognize that Jesus is Lord. Amen. As a matter of fact, God also hath highly exalted Him and given Him a name that is above every name. Amen. That at the name of Jesus, every knee should bow. Amen. Things in heaven, and things in earth, and things under the earth. And that every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. Amen. To the glory of God the Father. One great difference between Christianity and the religions of this world is that people who are merely religious don't understand that Jesus Christ is Lord. He's not just another good religious teacher. That's right. He is not just an, an example of how to live a moral life. He was not a philosopher. He was not simply a do-gooder. He is Lord. Amen. What separates Jehovah's Witnesses from true Christianity is, among other things, that they don't recognize that Jesus Christ is the Lord. If you ask a Jehovah's Witness to tell you who is the Lord, he is not going to say Jesus Christ is the Lord. He's not going to do it. What separates Muslims from true Christianity is that Muslims do not recognize today that Jesus is the Lord. I'm here to remind you that Jesus is the Lord. Amen. The title of the message is simply The Lordship of Christ. Amen. The Lordship of Christ. There are many names of Jesus that are found in the Bible. His name is indeed Jesus. And there's nothing wrong with referring to the Lord that way. But I'm afraid that many people who refer to our Savior as Jesus do not recognize Him as Lord. One of the most occurring titles of our Lord in the Bible, perhaps the fullest name is that which is my faith, the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. That's the way I enjoy referring to to the Savior who saved my soul. It occurs for the first time in Acts chapter 11, verse 17, where the Bible says, For as much then as God gave them the like gift as He did unto us who believed on the Lord Jesus Christ, what was I that I could withstand God? And the expression occurs for the final time in the very last verse of your Bible. Revelation 22, 21. And your Bible closes by saying, The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be 
with you all. Amen. 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 My Bible computer program says that that expression is found in 81 verses of the Bible. The term Lord is used sometimes in the Bible as a more casual term of respect. But it goes beyond that to refer to ownership, authority, and power. And in that sense, our Lord Jesus Christ owns everything. He has authority over everything. And he has the power and is able to do anything. I'm saying he is Lord. I want to talk to you for just a little bit this morning about the Lordship of Christ. And I'll give you three simple headings for thinking with me about his Lordship. First of all, I want to say some things about the domains of his Lordship or the areas of his Lordship. I want to mention the demonstration of his Lordship. And I want to close with a, an invitation for you to make a decision to accept his Lordship in your life. First of all, let me mention the domains or areas of his Lordship. In what areas is Jesus Christ Lord? Well, that question's answered for us in the 10th chapter of the book of Acts, verse 36. And you can just listen if you like. The word which God sent unto the children of Israel, preaching peace by Jesus Christ, He is Lord of all. Amen. You know what areas are His domains? All areas. Jesus is Lord. And Jesus is Lord of small things. He is Lord of great things. He created all things. In the beginning was the Word. And the Word was with God and the Word was God. All things were made by Him. Without Him was not anything made that was made. Saying, dearly beloved, Jesus Christ is the author and the finisher of everything that exists. Contrary to what anybody else can do, Jesus brought everything out of nothing. He invented somewhere when there was nowhere. And he took nothing from nowhere and brought it somewhere and made it something. I'm saying he's Lord. He designed everything he arranged everything. They talk about that no two sets of fingerprints are the same. And then when they get to examining things, they become convinced that the Lord's made everything unique. They tell us that no two snowflakes are the same. That's not talking about liberal politicians. He designed what we see, he arranges what we see, and he keeps them operating for just as long as he sees fit. Amen. And he arranged them, created them, made them like he wanted them to be. When he got done, he said, that's good. I like that. Amen. I know that's the O'Neill revised version of Genesis chapter 1. It reads <coughs> something like that if you happen to have a copy of the ORV. You visitors will have to bear with me because sometimes I'm teasing with you. I haven't put out my new Bible yet. Jesus not only created all things, He claims all things. He said in Psalm 50, He said, Every beast of the forest is mine. And the cattle upon a thousand hills. Where's the beef? He owns it. I know all the fowls of the mountains. And the wild beasts of the field are mine. If I were hungry, I would not tell thee. For the world is mine. Amen. And the fullness thereof. That's Psalm 50, verses 10 through 12. You may not see his signature. You may not see his brand on the things.
things that He's created. But I'm telling you, it all points to the Lord Jesus Christ. All things were made by Him. And without Him was not anything made that was made. Jesus created all things. Jesus claims all things. And one day, Jesus will consume all things. Amen. You need to realize that the things that we see are here only for a time. The things that you experience are only for a time. Amen. But if you believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, our eternal Lord can give you everlasting life. Amen. And what a blessing that is. The Bible says of what we see here, people worry about global warming. Let me tell you, man is presumptuous to think that our cranking up our automobiles is going to destroy the planet. It ain't going to happen. It's more likely to happen from volcanoes than it is to happen from Cadillacs. This world is not going to be destroyed, destroyed by your SUVs and your eight-cylinder gas hogs. You flatter yourself to think that, I mean, the horses probably are more likely to influence the atmosphere than your car is, especially where the horses are. You folks who live near where the horses are know that it, if you get enough horses together, you know where they are. It's almost like... Uh, going down to Bell. Yeah. You find that you know where the cows are. Yeah. Amen. Some of y'all have been and you've located <coughs> where the pigs are. And you think that by cranking your car up and driving it around and drive, flying your airplane, you're going to destroy this planet. You know who's going to destroy this planet? Jesus is. Amen. And until Jesus says time is up for this planet, He is preserving this planet until the time when He says it's time for it to quit. I'm not the least bit worried. I'm not saying that I'm for you trashing the neighborhood, destroying the world, but I'm just saying you're not going to be destroy the world. Jesus is. Amen. I think as much as you can, you ought to leave things better when you leave there than when you came to it. I think it's a good practice. But the Bible says that the heavens and the earth, which are now by the same word, are kept in store. This book holds everything together. God's word created all things. I believe God's Word maintains all things. Yes. I believe they are upheld, held together <laughs> by what the Bible calls in the book of Hebrews the Word of His power. And they're, by that same Word, they are kept in store, reserved unto fire against the day of judgment and perdition of ungodly men. 2 Peter chapter 3, verse 7. Some of you need to learn to interpret what CNN tells you in light of what the Bible tells you. Amen. Amen. And when the Bible says one thing and the experts say something else, you can just throw the experts right out the window. Amen. Because God has said how this world is going to end. Right. And God's going to do it, and you're not going to have anything to do with it. That's right. Jesus, when He does that, <laughs> will create all things new. Amen. Revelation 21, verse 5, says, And he that sat upon the throne said, Behold, I make all things new. Amen. And he said unto me, Write, for these words are true and faithful. There's coming a new heaven and a new earth, Amen. wherein dwelleth righteousness. Amen. Folks, hang in there. Man is not evolving. Man is devolving. Man does not naturally get better and better. 
even you as a Christian, you will need to obey God's command in order for you to make progress. If you just coast along, you're going to backslide. That's right. You've got to obey God's command, which is grow in grace. Amen. And in the knowledge of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. And while some things that you plant out in the garden may seem like they just grow of themselves, I'm telling you, God commands you to grow. And if you don't be obedient to God, you won't grow. That's right. That's right. Amen. The second thing I want to say about the Lordship of Christ is the demonstrations of His Lordship. You know, man thinks that he's somebody until he gets humble. I tell you somebody who has experienced some of the humbling of the Lord. And I'm not trying to be mean toward anybody because what God does is His business. Amen. Amen. But those people who've been involved in the tornadoes that have hit around the South recently, right. they have recognized they're not in control. That's right. That's right. You can build the strongest buildings that you want to build. That's right. You can build hurricane-proof buildings if you want to. Right. But I know someone who can take them down. Amen. And his name is Jesus. Amen. You can say with the builders of the Tower of Babel, let us build us a tower. And let us build us a, a name. And the Lord says, well, we'll just see about that. That's right. <laughs> and before you know it, that thing will be down on the ground in ruin. I guarantee you the people in Panama City got humbled Amen. by the last hurricane. Don't you know it? Yes. Don't you know the people on Mexico Beach got humbled? Amen. Say, well, we'll rebuild. You may rebuild. God's still able to take it down if he wants to. That's right. I'm not saying that I know the mind of God about all that he's doing. I'm just saying he's able. Amen. Every now and then he just lets man know, you're an ant and I'm God. Amen. You're a flea and I'm God. Amen. I remember my daddy-in-law talking about how that he left southwest Georgia to go visit his son out over in California. Had a good time until the, move, until the earth started moving under his feet. Amen. You know what he decided? He decided that that visit was over with. Amen. He was looking for solid ground, if not higher ground. Lord, plant my feet on something solid. Amen. He went home. You can think you're in control, and all the Lord has to do is just slide some mud. Amen. All he has to do is, is just split the ground up a little bit underneath. Amen. All he has to do is send some wind your way. Amen. All he has to do is to send some rain and water yes. your way, and he can show you that he's Lord. Amen. Demonstrations of his lordship. He said to the disciples when they thought that they were going to perish, Why are ye fearful, O ye of little faith? Then he arose and he rebuked the winds of the sea, and there was great calm. Men marvel, saying, What manner of man is this? Amen. That even the winds and the sea obey him. Answer. What manner of man is this? He is Lord. Amen. I'm talking about the Lordship of Christ. He declared his Lordship over the storm when he calmed it. He declared his Lordship over the sea when he walked on it. He declared His Lordship over every sickness when He healed it. He declared His Lordship over the unclean spirits when He said, Be gone! He declared His Lordship over starvation and poverty when He took a lad's lunch and fed a great multitude Amen. and had baskets of fragments left over. Amen. Saying He can do anything that He wants to do. Amen. I say that he is able to do exceeding abundantly above all that we ask or think. I'm saying he's able to save your soul. I'm saying he's able to calm your nerves. I'm saying he's able to fill you with peace. 
I'm saying he's able to, to fill the void that's in your life. <coughs> We've got people here who are bereaved lately. I don't care what you've lost. God is able to take care of you after the loss. God is able to meet your need. When the thing that meant so much to you, a person who meant so much to you is gone. Then I want to give you an opportunity to make a decision to accept His Lordship. Amen. In our text, the Bible says, God has made that same Jesus whom ye have crucified, both Lord and Christ. Not everybody submits to the Lordship of Christ, but they will one day. Some people would rather crucify Him. Some people would rather ignore Him. Some people would rather deny Him. The Bible says no man speaking by the Spirit of God calleth Jesus accursed. And that no man can say that Jesus is the Lord, but by the Holy Ghost. Amen. He's Lord. Amen. Some of you have come to this church, and I'm glad you're here. Amen. But you need to accept His Lordship in your life. Amen. For you to be able to enjoy the benefits of knowing Him the Lord. Amen. One of the ways you accept His Lordship is in salvation. When you get saved. I don't believe in Lordship salvation. I don't believe in Lordship and salvation in the sense that you get saved by being willing to quit your smoking, quit your dancing, quit your drinking, all that kind of stuff, and that's how you get saved. I don't believe that. But anybody who gets saved, gets saved not by helping God out. Anybody who gets saved gets saved as a helpless, lost, hell-bound, no good, hopeless sinner. Amen, preacher. Amen. Amen, preacher. And realizes that God did the work on the cross of Calvary. Amen. Amen. A man said out, out in desperation, cried out, What must I do to be saved? And they said, Believe on the Lord. Jesus Christ. Amen. And thou shalt be saved. The Lord Jesus Christ came to this earth, was born of the Virgin Mary 2,000 years ago. Amen. He lived without sin for 33 years, walking among men as the God-man, even though that most people did not recognize who He was. Then He died on the cross of Calvary and paid for your sins with His own blood. Amen. He died for your sins on the cross. He shed His blood for your sins on the cross. Amen. And if you'll trust Him as your Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ will take you to heaven. Amen. Amen. That's the only way you can come close to making Him Lord as a lost Go ahead. man. You can't start living as a Christian and please God. Because you're not a Christian. Right. The only way that you can please God as an unsaved person is to make the decision, I'm going to believe God. I'm going to put faith in the Son of God. Amen. Without faith, it's impossible to please Him. That's right. If you want to know what pleases God, it pleases God to save believing sinners. Amen. The Lord's not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. God sent His Son into this world to die for your sins Amen. so that you can believe on Him and be saved. Right. Secondly, let me say that in accepting His Lordship in your life, another way to do it is in serving God. When you get saved, you're not saved by serving God. You're saved by God sending His Son to die on the cross for your sins. Amen. You get saved by Jesus dying for you on the cross, being buried and rising again the third day. That's how you get saved. But after you're saved, you're saved to serve the Lord. Amen. And if you aren't serving the Lord, if you're not doing what God would have you to do since you got saved, you're not accepting the Lordship of Christ in your life on a daily basis now that you are saved. Amen. I want to call upon you to do that today. Amen. Another way that you and I can Accept the Lordship of Christ is in our speech. One of these days, every tongue shall confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. Wouldn't it be a blessing if you and I 
could do that now. Let's bow our heads and stand together, please.